In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the oxidation catalyst on this Ford F450 with a 6.4 liter power stroke. I'm going to try to take this EGT sensor out. The reason I say that is because a lot of times they just don't come out. Um, I do have new ones on hand, but it's uh, always a good idea to at least try to save this one. So uh, take a 13 millimeter wrench and a rubber mallet and uh, try to break the fitting free. The fitting is starting to round off and it's not even budging, didn't even break free. So yes, I could apply some heat here and keep trying, but most likely once I start heating this and it gets red hot, I do risk damaging the sensor. So at this point, like I said, I have new ones on hand because I expected this to happen. So I'm just going to unplug it, drop it down with the exhaust and install a new one on the new exhaust. I'm going to move on to try to remove this sensor over here. To do that, there is a 15 millimeter nut. Well, there are supposed to be many going around this flange, but this is actually the only one left for, for me. Everything else is rotted off. So I'm going to remove this in order to remove this bracket in order to be able to pull this sensor off. Once again, 15 millimeter socket. Looks like it doesn't want to seat very well. So I'm going to take a hammer and tap it on. I don't want to round this off. Otherwise, I create more problems for myself. remove this. There we go. All right, we'll put that aside. Now I'm supporting the DPF and the rest of the exhaust behind it with a bungee cord. It's a heavy duty bungee cord just because once I unbolt the flange, I don't want this to drop down and, and fall. So I have it supported. You can use a jack, jack stands, whatever you have when you're working on the ground or just strap it to the frame like I did. Now let's unplug the temperature sensors, the EGTs. If you just follow the wiring harness, it should be right up on the frame here. Sometimes they're a little stuck from sand and debris buildup, and uh, yeah, sometimes that happens. The connector comes off of its retainer. There we go. Press that tab and pull it out. Let's do this to both of them, and I'm just going to leave them in the exhaust because, like I said earlier, it's not going to come off, and I'm just going to replace them, which is uh, probably better anyway, considering the condition of this exhaust. I'm going to spray some uh, lubricant on this uh, hanger. It's best if you use something that is silicone based to, in order to not damage the rubber. However, in this case, really anything you have is better than nothing because these are difficult to get off. And I'm going to take a pry bar, try to pry the rubber that way off of the bottom hanger here. There we go. These are off. There's one more double hanger towards the front. Now the hanger at the front is just a single hanger. Pry from the back side, there's a, from the rear of the truck. That seems to be a better area to pry from. There you go, that's off. Next would be to remove the bolts from the flange. Ours came without the hardware. There should be one out in the open and one right next to the frame. Remove both. Usually they are 13 millimeter headed bolts but whatever yours are, take them out. Now let's pry over here. Fortunately for me, I have a access hole, I guess you could call it. It's rotted off so bad. I don't even have hardware left. So we're gonna try and separate this because there's literally nothing for me to unbolt here. I have to just break it off basically. And the more I pry, the more it's gonna let go. Okay, just go around, try to separate it. What's left of this mounting nut, I have to take off. I'm going to take a 13 millimeter socket and hammer it on there. I'm just going to cut it. If this thing is not moving, it's pretty much stuck on there forever. So uh, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm going to cut it off and then we have new hardware to install when the time comes. That's what was left of it. There we go. All right, so you have to split this so that 
this entire area dips down. I strapped it so that it wouldn't fall. I'm taking the strap off right now. There it is. We have to get this fitting off of here to be installed on the new exhaust. I'm going to spray it with some rust penetrant because this is off. I'm actually going to also spray it from the back side with rust penetrant. Now I'm going to apply some heat. I have an induction heater that I'm going to heat the base of the fitting up with. If you have a torch, go ahead and use that. But basically heat will help break this free. Okay, let's try to take this off with a 17 millimeter socket. Pull this off. Take these two 13 millimeter bolts out that hold this vibration damper in place. At this point, I want to make sure I clean this mating surface where the exhaust bolts on, or the rest of the exhaust, I guess. And uh, there's a lot of rust buildup here. And honestly, if you were to do this job right, you would just replace the rest of it, or at least fix this flange here somehow, whether you have to cut it and weld a new one or whatever you have to do. But this is clearly in somewhat poor condition. But I'm pretty sure there is still enough to bolt up a new piece and have it seal up. What I'm going to do is start by chiseling away the rust that has built up here. I'll just go around and do that. And then I'll just sand it with uh, some sandpaper to make sure that's a nice flat surface for the new gasket to seal up against so that we don't have any exhaust leaks over here. Now this is what it looks like after I cleaned it. It's obviously in somewhat poor condition, but uh, in our case, I'm just going to reuse it. It's, it's going to seal up. It'll be all right. Uh, just something to keep in mind for the future. The gasket goes on here, and it's important that you use a new gasket. And uh, you basically want to make sure that you have a flat surface for this to seal up against on both sides. Obviously, on this side, we're not worried about it because there's a brand new pipe. That's why I was really insisting on cleaning this side very well. Another note is that the new oxidation converter will come with new hardware, all these new studs. Note that this one at the top where that bracket goes on for the uh, um, sensor, the uh, stud is longer. Uh, but also, if you wanted to install new studs, you can. All you have to do is punch them out and put new ones in. The threads on mine are in perfect condition. And since this area is weaker than it should be, I'm not going to attempt to punch these out. I'm just going to reuse these studs. But if yours is in good condition and they don't need to be replaced, uh, you can totally just reuse what's on here as long as it's going to clamp everything on tightly. So let's put the gasket on and continue. Let's reinstall this. Make sure you uh, use new hardware if needed. I cleaned up the threads on mine because it's still decent. Well, the hardware is, this one is not so great, but it's still going to hold. Tighten it up, two 13 millimeter headed bolts. This fitting that snapped off for me, I just welded onto the new pipe. Um, this may or may not be the way that you end up doing it. Hopefully, you can either source a new fitting or re, uh, reuse the old one, save it. But uh, a lot of times, any sort of fittings on these exhaust pipes for diesel engines are really difficult to get off without damaging. So once again, I just welded mine back on. If needed, have a uh, helper pry the exhaust backwards. There we go. Let's put the mounting hardware back on. There we go. Once you get one started, it should pretty much stay in place. Start all of them on. It's important to get new hardware if necessary. You want this to stay clamped on nice and tight. Get these hangers popped back on. I'm just going to use a pry bar. And uh, now with the exhaust still kind of, kind of loose, I'm going to try and pry these on here. 
just like that. It is a good idea to put a little bit of lubricant on them because they do slide on a little bit better. Seat this on all the way. Get this other hanger resecured. Also, now let's tighten these up. I'm gonna start at the bottom, that way I can tighten up first. And now just go around, tighten all of them up. Thirty foot pounds is the torque for all these. I'm just gonna go around in a circle because I've already gone sort of in a cross pattern when snugging these up, so they should already be fully seated. And just like when tightening, I'm gonna start with the two bottom ones. That way, I make sure the bottom is fully seated and tightened. Now let's bolt up the pipe onto the uh, down pipe. I'm using the two provided fasteners for this. I'm gonna start this one on. As you can see, it needs to be pulled in quite a bit, but that's okay, I can do that with the bolts. The one at the top here on the frame is not too difficult to reach, but actually somewhat difficult to see. So you kinda have to feel around for it. Once you get it through, you can kinda see it from down here but uh, still done mostly by feel. I'm gonna tighten this one also so I can get this flange evenly tightened. So I tighten these back and forth with my air ratchet because it's the easiest thing that you can get up there if you if you don't have one, if you have to do it by hand, some uh, extensions with swivels will be necessary. This is a no gasket flange, meaning the two ends of the pipe crush onto each other. That's why it looks the way it does. And you need to make sure that this flange presses this pipe on evenly and tightly. The torque for these is 30 foot-pounds. I can torque this one, but there's no way I can torque that one just because I can't get any swing in there. So. I'm just going to make sure that both of them are nice and tight. They are definitely at 30 foot-pounds, if not a little bit over already, because I wanted to crush this a little bit. You want these two pipes to squeeze tight up against each other. If you still have an exhaust leak here, you can take the pipe down and uh, clean it even more, even though I already cleaned it. Uh, but you can put a little bit of gasket maker here, although I'm not sure how long it's gonna hold up because of the extreme heat that comes through this pipe. So, having said that, it's very important that you have clean surface here and nice tight flange. Let's get the exhaust gas temperature sensor back in. I put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads only, not on the sensor itself. Start it by hand so it doesn't cross thread. Go as far down as you can by hand and then use a 13 millimeter, uh, and I recommend a flare nut wrench, looks like this. That is because it grabs onto more size than just a regular open-ended wrench and snug this up. You don't have to crush it down or anything, just snug is good. And then we need to plug it back in. So take the electrical connector, make sure it clicks, and re-secure it onto the frame. In this case, it was on the, this wiring harness here, so uh, because the electrical tape gave out, I'm going to use a wire tie and wire tie it up like that. Install the other EGT sensor. Also put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads, bottom it out by hand, grab the same 13 millimeter wrench and make it nice and snug. That's good right there, perfect. And follow the harness up, plug it in. When you plug it in, make sure the wire here is out of the way of everything. You don't want it to get melted or anything on the, uh, on the exhaust. Make sure that clicks and this is very uh, nicely routed out of the way. If you think that yours is too close to the exhaust or anything else in the way, just wire tie it up here. Get the bracket situated here, and then slide the vacuum hose down on its fitting. Make sure it's bottomed out. Get the mounting nut back on. And with it started, snug it up.
This one, you do not have to torque to 30 foot-pounds just like the other ones. This only holds on this bracket, so just make sure it's snug. Now that we're done with the install, turn on the engine and make sure you have no exhaust leaks. If you do, it's most likely here at this gasket or at the other end, and in that case, you would address it as needed. But it's important that the exhaust goes all the way back through the tailpipe. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.